The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A gospel, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with the angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace in our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. I gotta tell you, I've been so looking forward to this weekend to be here at St. Gregory's because this is my home. And what I do at Christ the King Seminary comes from your faith, your life in Christ, and I just want to thank you, and I want to thank Father Leon, Sibby, Father Steve, Father Francis, and the whole faith community for allowing me to be here this weekend. I'm absolutely overjoyed to be back. Thank you. Um, I had another introduction to my homily until the 5.30 Mass yesterday when a gentleman in his 60s came up to me and said, I was really disappointed. He said, I was waiting for you to ask if anybody had a birthday or anybody had anything, <laughs> and it was my birthday and you didn't say anything. I said, Hello. You know? So I thought about it. I didn't do it at the 8 o'clock. Then a mom came up to me with her little son, and she said, Father, how are you doing? It's good to have you back. But he was disappointed. <laughs> he wanted to be able to tell everybody he was going into third grade. So, is there anyone who's celebrating a birthday? <laughs> Any special occasions? Anything you want to share? Honeymoons or... I know that we have two families here for baptism. Could you just show, just pick up the children? Are they, if they're not, don't let them cry. But <laughs> they are just incredible. Look at that. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything else? Yes, what do we have? An anniversary for? 47 years of marriage. Congratulations. And you're still here together? Okay, good. What else do we have? Yes. This gentleman here is, did you know that you're going to be 85? You, you look a little shocked. <laughs> 85 years old. Congratulations. I see a, the back pew. Of marriage? Happy? <laughs> All right, congratulations. That's great. Anyone else? Yes, Patty. School starts in three days. In three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. <laughs> Marie, thank you, thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you. 
anything else. To all the teachers, administrators, students, we certainly offer you our prayers as you begin school. It's always an opportunity not only to learn something, but to become something in Christ. So please be assured of our prayers as you begin this school year. There's no doubt at all that you cannot look at today's gospel by itself. It has to be considered part two or B in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. There's no way, and I'm actually disappointed that the church didn't somehow, some way, put them together in one Sunday celebration. In their wisdom, they did it for a particular reason. If you remember last week, Jesus asked that wonderful question, who do the people, and then who do you say that I am? And Peter does an incredible job. You are the Christ the Son of the living God. And even the people around him, his disciple friends, must have gone, wow. And Peter probably went, I got it, I got it, I got it right. Isn't that great? And then we've got this week. Last week he declares Jesus to be the Christ, the anointed one. And then Jesus sits them down this week and says, okay, you said I'm the Christ, this is what it means. I have to go to Jerusalem. I have to give myself away. I'm going to be put to death in love for you. And if you want to be my disciple, guess what? You've got to do it too. And Peter all of a sudden, wait a minute, time out, don't want that to happen, doesn't make any sense. Peter obviously got all the words right, but he didn't understand the meaning he didn't realize that when he declares Jesus to be the anointed Christ, that it was going to entail something. And there you have this confused person who now is not strutting, but going, what did I miss? He not only didn't get really who Jesus was, he didn't figure out who he was. And so today's gospel has Peter, most certainly, but you and I, Asking that same question. You're here today because you tell us by your presence that Jesus is your Savior. You've come to be nourished by the bread of life. But yet some of us, when we leave here or we do different things, we say, that's really good, but... Look at today's scriptures. Jeremiah, one of the most incredible prophets of the Old Testament, is struggling with that exact same thing. And he says, you duped me. And I let myself be duped. Enemies all around me. They want to kill me, literally. But I can't keep it in. It burns within me. I have to speak. And then you got St. Paul. Letter to the Romans. Now remember, Paul's letter to the Romans. This is Paul the Pharisee. This is Paul the one who persecuted the early Christians. This is Paul the Taliban member. This is Paul the one who gets stoned and picked on and finds it almost impossible at times to deal with Christ. And you hear Paul saying, give yourself fully as a living sacrifice. Where is he saying that? After encountering Christ on the Damascus Road after preaching to the Colossians, the Corinthians, the Thessalonians, all of those churches. He's doing it in Rome, and he's about to be put to death. He's imprisoned for the sake of Christ. He went through that same turmoil. Who is this Jesus, and what does it mean for me? Well, how did Peter get from this confused state in Matthew's Gospel to the point where he becomes the chief apostle of the church. He becomes crucified in, in Rome. What happened? I'm going to venture a guess. My guess would be that before and after this encounter that we see in Matthew today, that Jesus took him places. He took him on a pilgrimage, maybe with a story about his days as a child in Nazareth. So he understood Jesus just a little bit better. 
Maybe he invited him into the home of the tax collector, Zacchaeus. And he all of a sudden realized a little bit better who Jesus was, so he understood what discipleship was. Maybe when they took him to Tyre and Sidon, the Gentile land, across the, across the lake. Maybe when they were dancing at the wedding feast of Cana. Maybe when Jesus may multiplied the loaves. But every single time we have encounters with Jesus, it's not just an encounter with who Jesus is, it's an encounter with who we are and what we're supposed to become, suggesting that we've got to go on pilgrimage. I'm going to suggest a book, but before I do, I just want to let you know, Kathy Delaney, who is responsible for the store, when I was here, would always get upset with me because I would recommend books that she had not yet bought for the store. I'm doing the same thing today, okay? <laughs> so they're not open today, they're not open on Monday, but they will be open on Tuesday, so I want all of you to run over there and ask her for a book that she does not have yet. This book is done by James Martin. It's called Jesus, a Pilgrimage. And what he does in the book, he takes us to Bethlehem in a way that you can have a personal encounter with Jesus. He takes you to Nazareth. He takes you to Gennesaret. He takes you to the Garden. He takes you to Jerusalem, Capernaum. And in those experiences of being in the Holy Land, but being at home here in the States, he tries to introduce to us Jesus in a whole new way, just like Peter was, just like Jeremiah, just like Paul, just like St. John Paul II, Teresa, Francis, Claire, all the great ones. They had an encounter, and they pilgrimed. They did a pilgrimage with Jesus to these different places, not just so they could see who Jesus was, but they could figure out who they were. That's what I get to do for a living now. My full-time ministry as the President Rector of Christ the King is to provide an environment where people can come to Bethlehem, Nazareth, Capernaum, the wedding feast, the Mount of the Beatitudes, through maybe a moral theology course, maybe the desert in a silent directed retreat. What my hope is, is that the seminary will become that place of encounter for all of us. I'm going to ask this question that I ask at all the masses, no matter what parish I'm in. How many of you have never, for any reason whatsoever, been to Christ the King Seminary? Please raise your hand. Never been there. For any reason. It's about 50%, 60% usually. There are three things that I'd like to share in a second. When people ask me, how is the seminary doing? How many seminarians do you have? I say, well, six years ago, we had 12 and four in pastoral year. And six, one of those six was Dave Richards, so he doesn't count, okay? Because <laughs> I don't think he was ever really there, okay? <laughs> This year, we started out with 35. That's an amazing number. We have more seminarians than anywhere else in New York State, and God is blessing us in a variety of ways. And then people say, well, that's good. Good luck, Father. Wait a minute. Time out. Yes, preparing men for priesthood is our primary mission. But did you know that last year we had over 8,700 other people come on campus? Do you know that we have a graduate program for theology? Do you know that we have 109 graduate students, men and women, who study? We have a diaconate program. We have Kairos retreats. We have inner city middle school camps during the summer. We have marriage encounter. We have 132 acres where people come to encounter the Lord Jesus, to struggle with their relationship with the Lord. And so I'm going to say three things. You can remember any of it or some of it, but here's the three things that I want you to remember. First, everyone is welcomed at Christ the King. Everyone. 
Yes, we have seminarians. Yes, we've got deacons. Come out for a walk. Come out for a prayer. Come out for a conference. Come for dinner. That's great. I just send the bill to Father Leon. It doesn't make any difference to me. Okay? But everyone is welcome. Take a walk. Come and see the place. It's a magnificent, magnificent place. A time of prayer, a time as a family, a time as an individual. Number two, please pray for us. Not because it's just us and you're praying for Christ the King and the seminarians and the students, but we're praying for ourselves. We need to call forth other men and women to service and leadership in the church. Who's going to stand here? Who's going to run family faith formation or our school? Who's going to somehow be that youth director? Who's going to be that person who somehow leads a college retreat or takes them to Jamaica? If they don't encounter the Christ, it's going to be pretty hard to do. And your prayers inspires, encourages, and call forth people and yourself. And we need your prayers. And number three, of course we need your support. Next week, and throughout the Diocese of Buffalo, there is the campaign, the Appeal for Christ the King Seminary. Here at St. Gregory's, there will be a second collection. We ask you, I ask you personally, please be generous. I have 15 buildings on 132 acres that are pretty tired, but that's not what I want to use all of this stuff for. I want to start retreat programs for college students. I want to have a festival of faith where we bring in contemporary Catholic music and celebrate and dance and have a mass for the whole diocese. I want a place of spiritual growth for our priests. We don't have that right now. We need that. Why? Because we're all on pilgrimage. And your generosity next week will be a great gift to all of us. So anything that you can do to help support Christ the King and the collection will be greatly appreciated. And finally... Whether it's Christ the King, whether it's here at the parish, my prayer for you is that you will never, ever be afraid to go on pilgrimage. That you will never be afraid to know that somehow, some way, in your particular life, in your particular circumstance, that God wants to have you answer the question, who do you say that I am? And when you get it wrong, he picks you up and you go to another part of your life to encounter him again and again and again. Because at the end of the day, we all have to find our Jerusalems, our sacrifice, our full living sacrifice to the Lord. Why? So we can get to Easter, to the empty tomb. Thank you, and God bless you all.